This is a headgum podcast. Go back to those gold sounds and keep my advent to yourself because it's nothing I don't like. Is it a crisis or a boring change? Hmm. When it's central, so essential, it has a nice ring when you laugh hmm. at the low life opinions and they're coming to the chorus now. I keep my address to yourself because we need secrets. We need secrets, crits, 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 crits. <laughs> Back right now. That is an excerpt of my spoken word rendition of Gold Sounds by Pavement. Iconic band, Pavement. You're thinking, what year is it that we're listening to Pavement? Well, it's the year 2000. Mm. And, you know, staying in the same vein of music... To get us in the mood for today's episode, I'm going to list us the top 10 Billboard songs in the year 2000. Counting down from 10, because I feel like that's usually how countdowns work. He Wasn't Man Enough by Tony Braxton. Then we have Bent by Matchbox 20. I do love that song still. Amazed by Lone Star. Literally don't Couldn't know what this it. song is. No. Do you know it? No. Good. <laughs> I knew I loved you by Savage Garden. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's you're gonna tell me. Did, did you know he wasn't man enough by Tony Braxton? No. You know that he wasn't man enough for me. Was that how it goes? Yeah. You know. I mean, sure. And you know, Bent by Matchbox Twenty. Is <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, that's like definitely like the vocal. That's definitely the vocal idea of it. Is that it? Can only play 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. That's not helpful. Well, I can't play that because then we need to pay for it if I right, play yeah, it anymore. Yeah, don't, don't, don't pay Hold for on. it. Never pay for I mean, you really were doing it. Okay, I can't play anymore. <laughs> what am I singing? It's been three weeks since you looked at me. That's no, that's, no, 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 that's bare naked ladies. Uh -huh. Yesterday, uh, that's yeah. the tiny, yeah. the tiny chicken, chicken, chicken had a drumstick in your brain. Starts chicken. Watch the next files. The lights on. Yeah. No. Okay. So yeah. So I definitely don't know Ben. Yeah. It's okay. Amazed by Lone Star. What the fuck is this song? Do you know this song? Tevi know it all. Um, I knew I loved you, Savage Garden. We don't know. No. Say my name, obviously Destiny's obviously. Child. We do know. Everything you want by Vertical Horizon. We do know. I do not. What? I do not. Oh my god. I. I you I, know, amazed is like, baby, I'm amazed by you. you that's Paul what? McCartney. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the vocals. Wait. You know this one. <laughs> Hold. That's all I can play. Uh, that's it. This is a. It's, it's, this so is my much uncommon. Ever the turn and back in your mind. She's everything you want. She's, She's everything, everything you need. She's everything, everything inside of you that you wish you could be. Right. So I actively hated most of these songs. Yep. That's good. Okay. I want to know by Joe. I want to know so I can be a one. You know that song? I mean, I love your I rendition. I like to know. I want to know what makes you cry. So I can be the one who always makes you smile. First of all, I don't know it, but <laughs> but your sustained eye contact while yeah, singing it like to that? me. Yeah, you like that? It's intense. It's incredible. It's good. I'm deeply unhinged. I didn't do mushrooms all weekend long and give myself a cold. Okay. Maria, Maria. Maria, Maria. Yeah. Uh, uh, Santana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Sm Whoa. Santana, top two. Smooth. And smooth. Well, that was major. <laughs> well, Rob Thomas was, let's talk about- the top of his game. Fucker. He was a fucker. And by that, I mean everyone wanted to fuck him. Right. And who's he fucking now? Good question. Rob? Where are you? You up? And the number one <laughs> song, Breathe by Faith Hill. Mmm. Just breathe. Right? right? Is that, is that it? Just breathe. Yeah. I met Faith Hill once. Stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Most beautiful woman on the world. And let me tell you, 
my husband, obsessed with Faith Hill, mm -mm. obviously, mm. met her, took a photo of us together. I'm not like celebrity photo girl, you know what I sure. mean? But like when it's Faith Hill, what are Got you going to, to do? You're, it's basically like meeting the Queen of England. 100%. So we take the picture. I, when I tell you I could not look uglier <laughs> I'm going to stop you photo. here because I think you've got a lot of faith in you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Except for the fact that she's like 5'10 and a full-on model and has, I mean, my hair, I have, the, I have the hair density of a rat. So do I. You know, well, we also, we bleach the shit we out of our bleach hair. bleach it. I had to stop double processing I have to stop. My, my stylist just gave me a warning because it's all breaking. Mm -hmm. It's breaking off. I'm going to look like... Um, the Grim Reaper soon. When the stylist starts giving you a warning, you know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Because they want to keep doing it. Of course. Because it's expensive. It's like going to a plastic surgeon and then being like, <laughs> too much work. Slow your roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, wait. I'm, okay, but now we're just in conversation. Okay, mm. I'm. that's what's happening in 2000. I'm out of it, but it's okay because I'm in it. I'm out of it, but I'm in it mm. right now with my guest who graduated high school in the iconic year 2000 in Brooklyn, New York, Zoe Lister-Jones. Zoe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. Hello. Before uh, I'm breaking, you know, we don't have rules on this show because yeah. I, we don't believe in that. Mm. But I am, you know, breaking course because I want to up top say how much I enjoyed Slip. Oh, thank you so much. Zoe has a fabulous new show called Slip, which you can watch on Roku channel, which by the way, shockingly easy to watch. Thank you so much for saying so, because you know, so many people are like, uh, how do I watch Roku? Real easy. Well, here's the deal. There was a lot of shit that was on Quibi that I wanted to watch that I never got to watch, you and now I can watch it, watch it on, on Roku. Roku. Yeah. So, yeah. honey, I'm, it's free. It's free. The Roku channel .com. It's free. And I thoroughly, <laughs> it, there were elements of your show that actually were making me feel nostalgic for my high school moments because it was like it's like romancy, trippy, mm -hmm. homey television <laughs> that I think that when I, if I were I mean I enjoyed it now but especially when I was in high school seeing like you like naked for a lot of it like, that's really what I was looking for in my programming as a teen. I was like, what can I watch where people are fucking yes, and naked? Same. That has good narrative properties and storytelling that isn't bad porn. It's all I want to watch, yeah. you know, and to this day, I'm 40. But I want to be able yeah. to whack it to my friends. Thank you. And, that's, and now I can. And that's the title of this episode. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to make a show that my friends could whack it to. Yeah. And, um... But also, like, I, yeah, that's all I want to watch. Yeah. And, and, and the only things that were out there, like, I don't I don't want to drag other shows, but, like, were sexy but trash. Mm. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if we could be really invested yeah. in character and story and it could be cool looking and get its fuck on? Yeah. I love sex in shows <laughs> and in real life. <laughs> Same, Imagine same. if I was like, I love sex and shows, hate in real life. <laughs> yeah, I'm a virgin. Yeah, I've actually never um, fucked in my life. Yeah. Um. Well, that's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you for watching it. Of course. I mean, I'm when I know my friends, because, you know, very good friends with Whitmer Thomas. Oh, uh, he's so good on it. He's great in it. Um, he gets real naked. Well, later, when I later found out you got to see Witty T's little ass, <laughs> Whitmer famously on this podcast as well. Um, I was like, I got to see that ass. And that ass doesn't disappoint. No, nice ass. Mm -hmm. I, I would say everyone that's on the show, nice to look at. Yeah. But you interesting know? to look at. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, interesting. Not, uh, yeah. No, yeah. it's not like, you know, it's not like the ugly normal people to look at, like Margot <laughs> Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Yeah, those normies. Yeah. Who wants to see them fuck? No one. No. No thank you, no. I say. No thank you to Margot me. Margot Robbie's pussy? Yuck. <laughs> you. Tevi hates it when I do this stuff. Tevi's like, this is how we get canceled. Greta Titleman canceled for canceling Margot Robbie's pussy. Um, <laughs> no, I'm being stupid. Okay. High school. Mm. Zoe in high school. Because you, from what I do know about you, you have cool parents. Yes. And that is a twist. Yeah. Because a lot of us don't. Mm -hmm. 
my mom was very cool. My dad was fine. Yeah. But like you have cool parents that were artists, yeah. right? Yeah, um, my mom's a video artist. My dad is a conceptual photographer. Mm. Um, neither of them could make a living from their work, which mm. also totally influenced like my epic fear of becoming an artist myself. But um, they were the coolest. And it was like Brooklyn in the 80s. I was an only child, so I was being dragged to a ton of... Um, Brooklyn in the 80s was my, is my childhood, not mm -hmm. when I was in high school. Okay, let's yeah. not age me up. Um, but I was like- So being, you're 65. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> and not a lick of Botox. Um, yeah, they would drag me like art openings. And so I was very immersed in a cool scene. Mm -hmm. um, by the time high school hit, like I had a lot of older friends. Um, and I was- I think because my parents were so cool, mm -hmm. I was a little bit, like I was straight edge. Mm. Um, that is a twist I didn't see coming. Mm. I had, a, okay, so I shaved my head mm. when I was 11. My mom took me to like this Japanese hair artist. He did it all with like a tiny pair of scissors, like a oh bonsai God. tree. And um, and I had like, you know, those like wispy bangs. And I- Cute. Um, I was super androgynous. I was bullied horribly in junior high school. And I begged my mom to get me into like the public high school for weirdos, mm -hmm. which was not, I was not zoned to be in, like in Brooklyn to get into a public school that is not in your district is really hard. But Chuck Schumer um, would come to our synagogue on the high holidays. Mm. And my mom put a call into Schumer's office and said, you know, so she had the plug. Throw a Jew a bone. I was going to say the Jewish community <laughs> yeah. pulled through. And uh, and then I got, and and that, I don't think he, anyone from his office even responded, but somehow I was then uh, what was districted. The it was called Edward R. Murrow. It was huge. It was 4,000 students, four Whoa. grades. It looked like um, like a state prison. I was going to say yeah. like a jail. Yeah. Um, and the doors were locked. So like you couldn't leave during the day, but- um, but there was a courtyard, which was really more of like a loading dock where all the fuck up druggies, mm. cool kids would go. Um, but all of my older friends, cause I went, <laughs> I went to a non-competitive, non-for-profit summer camp in the mm. Berkshires mm. where there were, a lot, that's where I met like my older friends who then went to Murrow when we all went back to, uh, to it. Brooklyn. And so I wanted to follow them there cause they were so cool and they got me and I was being bullied so badly. And so then when I got in, it was like heaven. I mean, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. There were no um, periods. They they called periods bands and free periods optas. And it was like... Um, I love when these like big high schools have bizarro language. It's yeah. Because it, you are entering a new state. Uh, yes. A new u universe. Yes. Yeah. It was like... Um, and And... Every student got to, with a guidance counselor, basically formulate their own schedule. So, and by the time you got to be like a senior, you could be like, I want like A band, B band, and C band opta, which meant you could sleep in. So there was like a lot of independence. Well, who doesn't want that? Exactly. Um, there was a lot of independence. There was no, everyone, like, <laughs> it was mayhem. People just laid on the ground in the hallway. That's where they hung out. There wasn't like a people would bring pillows, and so the hallway was just was just students like sprawled, sleeping. sprawled, and um, and the principal was this incredible man. He was really a visionary. Like he, this was his vision of a school um, where students had more autonomy, um, and he would just sort of shuffle through. He looked sort of like Mr. Burns, but like the kind version. Yeah. And he would like shuffle through the hallways and he knew everyone's name, like 4,000 kids. He it's was like crazy. crazy. And um, and it was a big, there were no sports. So. Um, this is so interesting. Yeah. 4,000 kids, no sports. What did they send them all, all to do? Well. Because I feel like, and I'm not a sport girl. Mm. I love, I do love playing tennis now, Ooh, hot. but I'm not, I was not sport girl. I was like arty girl in high school. Same. But like, I do acknowledge the importance of sports, like for kids to like blow off steam right. and like, what what would they do? Did you have gym? Um, we were just racked with anxiety. Mm. Uh, no, we had gym, but our gyms were, <laughs> well, 
we had yoga as a gym. That's good. But the yoga teacher was, um, I would say, like, unwell. Mm. Uh, and she was also in charge of driver's ed. And then she was also in charge of um, a class which counted as a gym called Drugs and Compulsive Behavior. Um, it was really a how-to course. Drugs um, <laughs> and compulsive behavior. Counted as a gym. Is this for, like, every anxious, neurotic <laughs> Jew child went to high school? I feel like I would have fit right in. Oh, yeah. Like, it was heaven and obviously hell. That class, like, she would tell us all of her horror stories with drugs and then like how she, and she her name is Miss Hamlin and she'd be like I have one box of cookies in my house I go I eat one I put the box away I go back I eat another I put the box away I go back by by five minutes I've eaten the whole box that's compulsive behavior you throw the box in the garbage you pour water on it okay this is our gym class this is what we're learning <laughs> um and then in yoga class she had all of her driver's ed minions because as another gym, you could assist her in her driver's ed paperwork. So she had the driver's ed <laughs> students doing her paperwork while we were doing yoga. So like she'd be like, and breathe in. That's not right because they didn't make the K turn, you know? That's breathe out. really funny. <laughs> and when we went under, my friend once was like, stay awake during shavasana because we were all so tired yeah you'd fall in that yeah flat, i fall asleep now in I yoga do too. and in high school we were just like so tired um my friend was like do everything you can to stay awake and i did one day and she was like hypnotizing us the whole um shavasana she was like spay and neuter your cats and dogs due to this like she was like telling us she was really well, into spay and neuter your <laughs> cats and dogs she's really into um <laughs> Oh my god! To um, yeah, I was thinking the sterility you were, of animals. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to be like, now tell me your social security. Tell no, me. no, no. It was mostly about spay and neuter, spay and spaying and neutering. <laughs> oh my god! So I'm not an active. I'm, I don't identify as physically active, and I wasn't the, the, those um, were characteristics were not fostered in me, right? You know, because um, the school, quite frankly didn't foster them at all not at all but um, was there a theater program absolutely okay yeah. okay see now so we're I getting was dancing yeah i was like now we're getting somewhere <laughs> did you do theater in high school i did i was very shy um my mom put me in acting classes in like when i was like nine to try to help me like overcome my shyness um and i definitely liked it but it was so scary so and I also ha was never confident in my singing voice. Mm. And it was all about the musicals. Um, but you have a beautiful voice. Well, thank you. I have I have good tone, Greta. You do. <laughs> but I but I'm not a I'm not a belter. I'd say my pitch is I th I, well, oh, not consistent. I'm gonna tell you this, you know, Trudy Styler played my mom on search party. No. Yes. Oh my god, I forgot that. Yeah. That's so crazy. There you go. Um, I sing I sing a sting song. Yes. A police song in, in Slip. Um, acapella, scary. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I didn't, so I wasn't, I went in singing. I, I auditioned with <laughs> Fiona Apple's Shadow Box. Good. Because <laughs> I'm just a shadow box of baby. baby. Yeah. But that's like, that's for someone who can sing. Well, we, the, the, you know what's interesting about Fiona Apple music, generally mm -hmm. speaking? Mm -hmm. We all think we sound good when yeah. we're singing along with her, like in the car. And then you get to do it at karaoke. Turn and off you, the track. And you sound awful. You're dead in the water. Because no one can, no one can be Fiona, no obviously. One. <laughs> no one. No. No. Not even Faith Hill. No, not even number one of <laughs> top of the charts, Faith Hill. <laughs> um. I sang that, I got like deep chorus, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, and then I sort of remained deep chorus for a couple years. But um, we had this thing in high school called Sing, which was big in across New York public schools. And it was basically a student run musical in which seniors and freshmen would pair up and juniors and sophomores would pair up and it was a competition. This was, this Whoa, was our sport. That's cool. And we would make our own musicals. So st a student would be the director, a student would be the writer, a student would be the choreographer, a student would be the costume designer. And um, Okay, am I smelling a reality television show that <laughs> yes, needs to happen? Yes, totally. 
I wonder if it's still happening. It must be. That sounds really cool. It's totally like New York legacy in public schools. And it was so fun because yeah. we got to like, you know, be adults. Sort what did of. you guys put on? They were like the narratives were shoddy, but but we would write songs to uh, existing songs. Right. Um. So, you know. One of them, I don't even remember. You know, I've got nothing left up yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, but um, it was really fun. And and in that, I remember someone, I had a very small part, but some like P PTA parent was like, you've got real stage presence. <laughs> That's so nice. It was so nice because I was deep background. And, but then um, did it inspire you? Yes. And then I auditioned for a black box, like, uh, you know, straight play. Right. Um, arsenic and old lace Ooh. <laughs> playing an, an elderly woman and I got the part and that was like a big turning point for me. Do you feel that when you were a teenager the feedback you would receive from adults influenced you and like actually impacted you in your future decisions or do you feel like you were one of those teens that were just like Ugh, whatever you know nothing? No I was a, I was yeah I was obsessed with adults. Yeah. <laughs> Obsessed with I was too. I uh, yeah. like. I looked at my mom and her friends, and I was like, "Oh, to be in the your mid to like late forties, early fifties, yeah. drink Chablis <laughs> and like smoke Marlboro Lights. That's glamour. The dream. The dream. I wish. I Tevi's gonna scold me. I wish cigarettes didn't make me sick. I didn't you know make what? us all sick. <laughs> I would love to fucking smoke a Marlboro Ultralight." With like a glass of Sancerre mm. in a suit? That's woman. I'm not, that is woman. I'm not a smoker, but on my 40th birthday, I was alone in Italy. We can circle back to it. And um, and I bought a pack of Absolutely. like those skinny, bitch sticks. skinny bitch sticks. Yeah. Ooh, did I not live my goddamn you life on that did. day? Smoked the whole pack? You should. I felt fine. Of course. I felt good. Tobacco is actually... Fake in Europe, it does. It's, it's healthy. <laughs> yeah, it makes you. It makes you stronger. It does. It's like spinach. And yeah, <laughs> it is. That's what I'm. What I'm going to teach my kids. Yeah, it's like a smoothie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. In our house, we <laughs> smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for smoking one of my favorite movies. Great movie. Um. Okay. So you you did want to be an adult desperately you, like did you hate being a teen i hated being a kid mm. i did not want to be a kid at every like bar and bat mitzvah i hated being at those tables just wanted to be with the adults every wedding that i go to with my parents i just wanted to stay with them and not go with those bummer kids you know I know the kids table nothing Ugh. is more mortifying mortifying you're there and you're like okay like i understand we're all the same <laughs> age but like i'm so much older than you yeah yeah I remember like being at a kid's table and like talking to someone that was like older than me and me being like, this is like, this is embarrassing for you. Yes, I have been there as well. And just like all of the bullshit, the dancing. Like I was like, I'm too old for this. Yeah. You know, character artists, like get out of here. Cha-cha slide. No. No. Wh whereas now, I'll do I'm the cha -cha desperate slide. for a cha-cha slide. Yeah. I will start it. They were doing uh, the cha-cha when I was in DC two weekends ago. One of my best friends from high school came down with me and we decided to walk all over to the mall and well, to the White House. And in front of the White House, there was a guy doing the cha-cha slide. No. Joined right yeah, in the cha-cha slide. Yeah, sure you did. That's yeah. patriotism. Yeah, it is. That, yeah. is what, that is what it's called to be a patriot. <laughs> I did the cha-cha slide in front of the White House. That's amazing. Bucket list <laughs> <laughs> goals. Uh. Um, when did you have a boyfriend or anything or a girlfriend very, in high school? Uh, very much not. Um, I was like so afraid of intimacy. I had really deep friendships. Mm -hmm. I think the shaved head was... I was going to say, did you have the shaved head throughout high school? So I entered with it. Um, and I t was completely like bisexual, but I could not. I was not willing to face any of my sexuality, like on any part of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't kissed anyone. Like I was very, very shy. Not even at your nonprofit summer camp? <laughs> I know. What's the point of summer camp if not to kiss? 
I can still I, I, taste I, the like oh. sweet spaghetti sauce on the boy's oh. mouth that I kiss for the I first dream, time. I dream of that. I think oh. I would be so much um, more grounded. It's <laughs> person now. If I had earlier like examples of safe intimacy, because when you get older, then it's like you know gross and. Um. <laughs> I actually beg to say that most of my intimacy as a teen was unsafe. Really? Yeah. I was like, I got on birth control when I was, uh, I had huge tits. So Mm. my mom put me on birth control when I was like 13 to see if it would help my boobs from growing. I ended up getting a reduction when I was 15. Wow. But the second I got on birth control... I don't know. I, I mean, this is like this is like the fear of like conservative America. They're like, put your teens on birth control. They're gonna start fucking. And I did. I was like, I was like, all <laughs> everyone's gonna fuck raw in high school. <laughs> yeah, sick. Not good. You know what I mean? Like, I certainly don't want my my future child to be like coming home being like fucked without a condom. Yeah, let a. F- 15 year old coming inside. Give me one inside. of your cigarettes, mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come tell me like, I'm like exhausted I after sex. <laughs> Raw dogging. Um, yeah, but counterpoint. Yes. Um, I feel like to be in touch with your like lust yeah. in a way that's sort of unapologetic at that age is cool. Yeah. I mean, I was fucking boy crazy like i was like crazy boy girl body horny yeah and crazed (laughs) you know i i felt like a boy i remember being jealous of boys that they could like jack off Mm. whenever they wanted yeah like i talked to some of my guy friends now that were like oh like i jacked off so hard my dick looked like looked like ground beef and i would be like I would do that. I'd yank on that thing so yeah. hard. It's so gross. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to take it there. Ground beef. Yeah, who was telling me that like their it, dick looked like ground beef? Actually, it's form changes. It's just like it's raw. Like a- <laughs> oh, I think I, I, I know who it is, and I think that, that they should come on the show and talk about it. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, I don't. Um, I was I was really afraid. Yeah. Um, and I so like I started to get some attention, but I would always I was much more comfortable in like the unrequited love mm. space. It was safer for me. Um, so I there was a lot of yearning, mm, uh, that's like beautiful. obsessive yearning. Yeah. But um, but not a lot of action. <laughs> it was, were you a diary person? Very much so. Yeah. Uh, and like and. I remember, like, my first kiss was this boy. It was, like, 15. It was, you know, late. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was really, like, a great kiss. And then he, like, wanted to date. And, like, we were, like, talking on the phone. I immediately just got so scared. Mm. Like, intimacy, just any form of that was so scary to me that I was, like, I can't do this. Mm. And then um, he was part of, like, the lighting board crew, which was, like, the bad boys. (laughs) (laughs) And... I remember walking past the hallway with all the lighting board crew guys and them like calling me a bitch and like really, yeah. And then I was like, what did I do? Why? All because you didn't want to date that guy? Yeah. Because you were scared? Yeah. And they thought that I had dicked him over or something or been a tease. I fucking hate teenagers. It it was so confusing. And then he started dating the gym teacher's daughter, not the crazy one, but a different one who was actually cool and hot. And once he was in that relationship, like I was devastated like Ugh. and then i just became infatuated with him because he was now unavailable right um so i would play that game a lot with myself uh and then yeah i you know i never had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and then in co- in college it was sort of just like i had to play catch up and lose my virginity and right <laughs> You and know? like get there and get there but yeah. you had to have made out with more than one person in high school i did yeah like um, I made out with the star of Fiddler on the Roof. He played Tevya. Okay. okay not, not to brag. Not to name drop. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, like, half dated him for a smidge and then got scared. Well, because it it famously goes down at cast parties. Famously. Cast parties were hot. Yeah. Um, Because theater, the theater community is the horniest community in high school. Yes. Um, 
And I remember there was like a scandal in my theater department. Like I was the theater uh, director at my high school famously hated me. So I was never in any of the plays. But I Why? obviously... Because I was stunning and gorgeous mm, and obviously. she was threatened. Yeah. Copy. I you don't know, know why I even asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. It's pretty <laughs> apparent. Um, no, but to be honest with you, I really don't know why. I know that she would like do this to many, many people. And like this was something that has come up later on. Mm. Um, but there was an incident that happened where so they were doing like Arabian Nights mm. and two people had to kiss and I remember they didn't know how to stage kiss so these two people just started full on like tonguing each other down making out like in the rehearsal and it was this whole drama where it was like the theater department's too horny oh, and is like encouraging kids to have sex and I'm like well yeah that's the theater kids are horny freaks but when I watch things now and people don't open their mouths mouths when they kiss on screen like grown people very weird i think it's weird very strange yeah i i'm i'm all i mean you gotta ask you know cool for me to do this but i just like specs fine if you're if you're on your way to work a peck on tv very normal mm. actually absolutely that's that's you're off to work you're yeah off we go but if you're trying to tell me that these people are about to like Bone. Bone and no tongue, no open mouth, just no. closed. Very strange. Unless that's your kink. Ew. Oh. Yeah. No, I I was once in a play as an adult, a young adult, where I had such a crush on my co-star mm. and we had to kiss at the end and um, it was closed mouth, but it was on stage. And right. I was like, I was also a club promoter at the time and, and he came to my club and I was like- What club? It was called Plum on 14th Street. Uh, and 8th Avenue in New York City. I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a dark time in my life. But um, we've I, all had a moment where we did something at a club in New York. Yeah, we sure do. Yeah, I did it for so, so, so many years. That's good. Um, but I was like, do you want to actually make out? And it was so naughty. It was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Where else are you going to do it? Nowhere. <laughs> nowhere else. Nowhere if not in front of thousands of people. Were you a good student? Very good student. Mm. Yeah. I um but but and like because because I loved learning. That's good. <laughs> like I was it wasn't even so much like I was obsessed with it was grades. Just joy. I really loved learning. Yeah. Like I was taking extra classes. Like um I I I went in uh my mom put me in this private school for junior high school because she didn't feel like the public schools in Brooklyn were were good academically at that time and like went into debt and it was a nightmare. But I had a much better education like there. And so I when I got to high school, I was already in like level three French as a freshman. And um, so then I was like in AP French as a, a sophomore. And so then I started taking Spanish and you know, like adding to the curriculum so I could learn more languages because I had more time. That's and beautiful. It was not. It was nice. Um, That's very adult. I mean, that kind of goes into the theme of you wanting to be an adult as a teenager. Yes, I was dying to be an adult. I um, was the editor in chief of the school newspaper, huge <laughs> the Moreau Network, <laughs> um, for two years. Um, that was fun. I always like. I loved writing. Yeah, and so I did that as much as I could, and. Um, yeah, there were some really cool teachers there who That's I like good. really vibed with and who I was um, excited to like <laughs> learn from. <laughs> no, I think that that's really sweet. Yeah. What was like when you look back on high school, was there an outfit that you really like identified with? Is there like clothing in your mind that was like, wow, that was so me that really reflected who I was? Hmm. Because you are such a fashionable person. I hate fashionable. Thank you. Me, that word is very, you're so fashionable. I'm fashionable. You're such a fashionable I'll take it. I'll lady. Take it, Greta. That I wonder what your style was like in high school. Um, it was pretty wild. Like, there were a lot of, I had a pair of um, 
John Fluvog. Do you remember mm, John Oh, Fluvog? do I remember John Fluvog? John Fluvog, they were like black and white, like Oxfords, but they're like wild looking, like striped. Yeah, it's very I, Willy Wonka. Very Willy Wonka. And then like big sort of polyester uh, 70s pants. Mm-hmm. And then generally like um, sort of a, a baby tee, mm. you know? <laughs> It sounds like again what the kids are wearing today. It, I yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And and then my my shaved head, like I I bleached it when I got to high school. Then then it was blue. Then it was green. Then it sort of started growing out into like a faux hawk mullet. Cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, I was like, yeah, it was that classic nineties. It was it was it was ninety six. Like when I got I there, love so it. it was like peak nineties fashion. Were you upset that you were an only child? Yes, I do have two half sisters uh, who live in Canada, but they weren't like they came to visit a couple times. It's but, different when you have a sibling that lives with you all the time. Yeah, yeah, and they were so far away. Um, I, I, I was upset that I was an only child. I wanted a sister so badly, mm. um, and when my one sister came to visit, she hated me so much because I stole her daddy. <laughs> you know, because like I mean, I mean. She was in Canada and he was yeah. in New York and that sucked. Um, so I was so devastated because when she came to visit, I, I wanted to bring her to show and tell at my preschool. Aww. And she was like, and she said, I wish you were dead. <laughs> anyway, we're fine. Um, but um, anyway, I did. And I think my parents split up when I was nine. And I look back at that time now in all of the various therapy modalities I'm um, just burning all my money on and think, yeah, I felt so alone at that time. Yeah. And like it would have been nice to shoulder that kind of thing with a sibling. Yeah, I always think about like I have a sister. I've met her. Love her. You have met yes. my sister. Yes, this is true. She's wonderful. And I'm so grateful for my sister. And I also have a half brother. Mm. And I love my half brother very much too. But uh, I always think about only my friends that are only children and how it's an experience, particularly like high school where you're going through the growing pains yeah. of like adolescence yeah. and not having a sibling, even if your sibling were to be like a huge dick to you or whatever, you still have this like other person to kind of either learn from or teach. Yes. Yeah. I mean, my best friend in high school, she um, came to Brooklyn from Russia when she was nine. And her older brother, every time I would call, I'd be like, hi, is all there? And he'd be like, hold on, shit face, like every yeah. time. And I was like, there was something so mean about it. But also I was like, that's kind of fun to have yeah. that kind of banter. I don't know. I feel like in high school, it can go like one of of two ways. Like I know younger siblings who have really shrunk in the shadow of mm. like a bright and shining star older sibling. Yeah. And that I don't I don't envy. No. But um yeah. I would like a sibling now cuz it's like a forever best friend. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> it's complicated. Maybe I um, could adopt one. You could. Hmm. I'm sure that you can join our my sister. Okay. You can join my sister great. and I. You can have two sisters. That'd be great. Um is that a knock at the door that I hear? Well, yes, I think it is. Welcome to the High School Guidance Counselor's oh, Office. God. I'm your high school guidance counselor. Mm. In this section of the show, you get to rectify a wrongdoing of your high school past. You can say fuck you to someone or you can apologize to someone or you can do both. Mm. And then, you know, kind of exactly like therapy, you speak about it once and then you're cured. Okay. Yeah. I've got it. But it doesn't have to be my guidance counselor, right? No. As I as I mentioned, I loved most of my teachers and guidance counselors. No, 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 no. I, I, play, I play your high school guidance counselor. Oh, I'm telling you about yeah, this. Yeah, I are. get it. Okay, yeah. I'm in the role play. No, we're role okay. playing. I get it, I we're get it. We're fully I get role it, playing, it. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so. Um, Sarah <laughs> told me that Jesse had a crush on me. <laughs> this is not anything I would ever bring to a high school guidance counselor, but we're doing it, okay, yeah. in this role play. No, um, no, but this is real. This is real. Okay. And I'm telling you as the guidance counselor. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, you know, Jesse, the hottest boy in Brooklyn? <laughs> Duh. Yes. I mean, it, he should be named Jesse, so yes. Yes. So Jesse's the hottest boy in Brooklyn. I'm hanging out at Jesse's house with Sarah. Uh, Who is Sarah? Sarah is a friend of mine. Okay. Um, But, you know, she's edgy. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, know, you can't tell really if she's trustworthy, but she's fun. Yeah. Um, and I think Jesse would never pay any attention to me. As I've mentioned, I have a shaved head. Mm -hmm. I, I think of myself as pretty invisible to boys and girls alike. Um, and after we leave Jesse's house, Sarah is like, Jesse has a crush on you and he wanted me to tell you. And I was like, no. And she was like, yeah, he likes you. Like he wants to get together with you. You, you understand like what who I saw myself as and right. who this person was. I couldn't even compute it. And so days passed and I told my our mutual friend, um, I was like, Jesse has a crush on me. How crazy is that? Mutual friend goes back and tells Jesse that I said that. And then Sarah on the subway to high school goes, um, you like went spreading gossip and now Jesse knows and he doesn't have a crush on you anymore and he doesn't want to see you. So painful, so humiliating. What? And she was so mean about it. And so I would like her expelled from school. <laughs> yeah. That is really fucked up. It was fucked. It definitely like fucked me for like a long time in terms of like ever feeling that I could trust that someone was interested in me. <laughs> well, in feeling that, that you could trust anyone was interested in you, that you could trust like a friend or yes. someone else, that you could literally trust anyone at all. Yeah. That is the psychological warfare of teenage dumb yes. that is really, 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 really uh, harrowing, harrowing and impacts confusing. you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very confusing. Like awful. It was so awful. And then um, she ended up becoming sort of a part of this. Then there became this this rivalry like between her her and our other and my other friends we were all like a team at first and then it was like this weird rivalry that i didn't understand because she started becoming much more like identifying with the dudes right and we were like the scared girls who like you know met many of whom like came out later in life <laughs> the person the like the guy's girl in high school not, not to be trusted not to be trusted yeah. unfortunately unfortunately i think that it's different now I think I feel like people are much more blended yes. now, but I remember like the guy's girl is ultimately with the guys. And funnily, I think in college, I became more of a guy's girl. Mm. I think in but some- But the vibe when you're a guy's girl in college is, is different. different. It is different than high school for sure. The social currency and what you're like wheeling and dealing with in high school- is very different than what you're dealing with yeah. in college. I was like, I was so, so not a guy's girl <laughs> um, in in high school that like my girlfriends and I would go to a house party and would lock ourselves in a private room and put on a dance mixtape and just dance just the five of us. That's really nice. <laughs> I mean, it was so nice. It was the most fun time of my life. What well, we was your were... favorite song to dance to? Shoop, Salt and Pepper. Obviously. Yeah. That is like the, that song, I mean, first of all, that song has made them so rich. Yeah. It's in everything. It, 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 I don't think, I don't know if it's matched. Like. In terms of. Every single, what was I watching the other day? Made. Mm. <laughs> it's in Shoop. I mean, Shoop is in Made. <laughs> made the Netflix show? Yes. <laughs> I was on an air, I've been I've been on so many flights the past four months that I was uh, made was all made. That was left to watch. Yeah, yeah. And there was shoot. There was shoot. You can't escape it. You literally can't. What is it? Also, they do the dance in famously in another movie to shoot with like Kate Hudson. Yes. Oh my god. You know Kate Hudson is doing that in a rom com. Uh, you know she is, and I and she has. Yeah, and I like can't that, think about it. That yeah, that song. There was also um. Weirdly, and this is a deeper cut, there was a Natalie Merchant Christmas song that really got our party Wait, going. <laughs> what, 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 what song is that? There was like a Keith Haring Christmas album. Now, as a Jew, I was not these things I did not I'm know. I'm going to look this up. Um, it was, um, um, he was born, born in Bethlehem. Oh. That's the song. And Natalie Merchant did a cover of it. And, you know, we were, my friend especially was like major Natalie Merchant head. Um, I really get down with the 10,000 Maniacs, but... Oh, wait. That song, Born in Bethlehem, yeah. 
Okay, well, it starts slow. Yeah, this is a chew. Okay, that's all I can play. Yeah. <laughs> I understand the sued. game. Yeah. I understand the rules of the game. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was um, that was an interesting twist. Also, beautiful album artwork. Keith Haring. I know. I've always wanted to make a Hanukkah album. You should. Yeah, we don't have any. I guess Adam Sandler gave us one song. Uh, yeah, I want like a cool one. You can do that. I think I might. You should. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> wow, well, fuck Sarah. Yeah. Sarah with or without an H. With. Sarah spelled without an H. <laughs> Remember that song, no. that Ben Fold song? No, do you want to play me 10 seconds of it? <laughs> <laughs> I should. Maybe that should be my new podcast. Um, Tevi, what's our classmate corner today? So today we have Carmen writing in. Um, she says, hi, Greta. I want to take this opportunity to give an apology to the priest who I probably scandalized at my senior year school play. I can't remember what the play was called, but I was playing the reverend mother of a convent. So I was dressed from head to toe in nun garb. It was the last scene before the curtain closed and basically all the actors were on stage except me. My bladder was absolutely bursting because there was no bathroom backstage. And I knew there would be a big bathroom line after the show. Plus, everyone would want to see me and congratulate me. So as I saw it, my only option was to exit the building and pop a squat in the parking lot. As I'm squatting there, hoisting up my nun dress while I empty my bladder, who should walk by but the hot priest who used to occasionally say mass for my school? Our eyes met, and I continued peeing for a few seconds, but then he broke eye contact and quickly walked away. I still have not fully recovered from the simultaneous shame and exhilaration of that moment. I think secretly I hoped that he would... He thought it was a vision from God, but realistically he probably just thought, well, I guess nuns have bladders too. Our paths crossed... Wait... <laughs> Okay. Our, our paths actually crossed again years later because we ended up in the same master's program. Turns out he remembered me and remembered the peeing nun. We laughed about it, and then he asked me out for a coffee. I know you said you don't care if people make up stories, but I promise this one is 100% true. Carmen. Oh, my goodness. Okay. He asked her out for a coffee? Like on a date? Yeah. Yeah, years later when they were in the same master's program. Master's Wait, but hold master's on. Program. Wait, hold Wait. on. <laughs> Wait, was he a real, he was a real priest? priest, or he was a or he was a priest in the play? No, he was a real priest. <laughs> real priest, uh, that who used to occasionally say mass at my school. And she's a ch and she's a child. She was a senior at the time. Okay, and she peed in her nun garb. What? Where exactly again? <laughs> in the parking lot behind the the stage. The, behind the theater. And he came by. He was just walking by the and parking And saw lot. the stream. Didn't get that graphic. <laughs> Should <laughs> I then, read it? And then years later asked her for, for coffee, coffee because they're in the same master's program. Yes. So Carmen, he's a, he's a I'm going to need more details, hon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, first of all, is he still a priest? Or has he left? I didn't get that info. Are they fucking? Yeah. <laughs> and what's and the is there a pee fetish program? Yeah. Wow. All left to be answered. Oh my god, you are wearing like a a habit and everything. <laughs> Whoa, that's interesting. I once um played a <laughs> dead junkie on Law and Order, as you do. You know Law and Order SVU. I've seen every single episode. Oh, you have. Was this an SVU episode? Well, I get confused because I was on all four. Which one is... That one was um, Chris Noth's first uh, season back. After okay, so Big. that is normal law That's Mothership. I was on SVU. Yeah. SVU is, is Hargaday? Yep. Okay, on that one, I was an Orthodox Jewish woman, naturally, whose husband um, was um, raping children. Um and uh, but I'm gonna need to <laughs> go back. I'm gonna need to go back and, and then, find that. And then on CI, yep. you're not, you know, Criminal I, intent. yeah, I was um, a rape victim who then murdered her rapist. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that was a good one. And on trial by jury, which is short lived. Yes, with, only one season. Only one season with, with Mad Madame Bibi Newworth. Yes. Um, I was the sister of the deceased. Anyway, 
the point being, <laughs> we can go through my IMDb if yes, you want. If you yes, want to pull it up. Yes, 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 um, yes. The point being, uh, I was in this dead junkie makeup and we were on the West Side Highway in New York shooting at their studios. And it was like two in the morning and they were like, do you want us to take off your makeup? And I was biking. I live in the West Village. Yeah. And I was like, I think I want to leave it on. Yeah. And just see what happens when I like, bike in New York City looking like this. Yeah. Like a rotting junkie corpse, like uh, like track marks everywhere, like black eyes. And so I get on my bike and I just start biking. Nobody pays me any mind. And then I go to lock up my bike outside, outside my apartment. And this guy was like, yo, my friend wants to talk to you. <laughs> and I got catcalled. So what? <laughs> I mean, it's no, it's no habit pissing down the sidewalk. But it's but... track marked dead girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to think the most fucked up I've ever looked at being catcalled. Hmm. I don't know. Probably when I was so bloated and like <laughs> looked disgusting and so tan after just doing one year of college in Arizona. Oh yeah, that was. I got so much dick then, but I think it was because I was so easy. Literally, <laughs> God, you were bloated from all the dick. Oh yeah, D dick bloat. <laughs> you know you that know. dick bloat. You know that, the dick that, bloat. That's hard. It happens. It sure does. Yeah. It was dick bloat, coke bloat, mm. alcohol bloat. Yeah. The They'd never tell you that cocaine bloats you. Mm. And it does. Which is interesting because it used to at least be cut with laxatives. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Turns out you can shit all night still and bloat. still bloat. <laughs> 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 Don't do drugs. <laughs> um. If you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? Um, I think it would be to like let love in. <laughs> I think I was so afraid of it. I was so afraid of my heart being broken that I just wouldn't even dip a toe in. And I think I wish that. I would have had the self-confidence and self-worth to give it a shot. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of though, I feel like we always need to work on that, even in adulthood. Totally. Because even when you think you've like let love in as an adult, th that concept is constantly recalibrating and like what it means to us and what that means like and where we are in our life and what we need in our life and... I kind of feel like that's just like life as a whole. But I definitely believe that we have the training wheels on for that when we're in high school. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. You know. And to like not count calories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Bummer. I do. Bummer. I mean, I think, w was I talking about this on this show? How like I I didn't put together that like, I definitely had disordered eating in high school when I would like eat half of a Kit Kat bar for lunch mm -hmm. and like a Gatorade mm -hmm. and like thought that that was like good. Yeah, because we were all sort of like sharing our tips and tricks t to our yeah. disordered eating paths. And it's like, why am I falling asleep yeah. constantly? Yeah. Because I don't have nutrients nutrients in my body. At a crucial moment in, in your human growth. <laughs> yeah. It was like I would have no food in my body and then I'd get stoned after school oh and then I'd God. come home and I'd eat a block of cheese. Mm. And I was lact I am lactose intolerant Perfect. and then I'd just shit. <laughs> so I was constantly <laughs> sick. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly had diarrhea. Yeah. Same. Well, still. And and it's like the Ashkenazi stomach. It's not okay. Mixed with yep, cheese. Cheese, <laughs> not a good combo. And like being an anxious teenager. Well, and it's all anxiety. You know, they say the gut is the what is mind. It? Gut is the the brain. The the brain gut the connection brain, is yeah. very is is potent. The gut is the brain of the body. I would say that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like anytime I'm like I have food poisoning. It's I I'm just anxious. Yeah. It's rare that it's food poisoning. Were you an incredibly anxious teenager? So anxious. Were you medicated at all? No. 
Yeah. I probably should have been. I was on a lot of antibiotics because I had terrible cystic acne. Never did Accutane, but that like fucked my stomach. What even did you more. take? Doxy? For like, you know, I had to pop back on 40 milligrams of doxycycline because when I moved here, I got acne and I never had it before. I got full on rosacea acne all really? over my face. Yeah. And did it clear it? It cleared it, but now I've been off of it. And now I'm noticing, I'm like, this shit is coming back on my chin here and here. And I never had it before. I'm so mad at myself for, for taking those antibiotics at that age for so long because I think it really did fuck my gut up. But you know what? We didn't know any better. I know. Like there's like you didn't know any better. And also, by the way, being a teenager is already like horrific. Yeah. That when you have Boils acne on, your on face. top of yeah. that, it's like that is a really, really, really hard thing it's to manage. Awful. But and then and I had friends who went on Accutane. That seemed even more awful. Crazy. Just the sloughs of skin falling off their face and the depression and it's, and the and the li the chapped lips. lips. Oh god. High school's um, rough. <laughs> did you go to your prom? I did. I went to um two proms. The jun I went to the junior prom. I went to senior prom as a junior um with this boy that I was in love with. Mm. Um, who only saw me as a friend. Mm. I no think kiss? he was, mm -mm. I think he was like, I got friend zoned so much, but it it felt like they were such emotionally intimate relationships. It felt that perhaps they're all gay. No, I think I just, they just didn't know what to do with me. Mm. And I also didn't really know what to do with myself, like in terms of my own. Too much of a woman. Maybe that's it. Um, we went together. He asked me and his ex-girlfriend, and I of course had like the highest hopes, like mm -hmm. this was our night. And um, his ex-girlfriend found out we were going together and said she was going to stab me in the eye with her high heel. Oh, my God. So stakes were high. Um, and then we got there and she was like terrifying. And then he left with her. Oh, I was devastated. What did you wear? Um, I wore like a purple sort of slinky. I had very short bangs at that time, mm. too short. Like Betty Page? Yeah, like purple slinky sort of thing. Um, and then I went, my senior year, um, I wore like a yellow sort of vintage like brocade mm. thing. And I went with the Swedish foreign exchange student. I, oh. I asked him. That's sexy. <laughs> he was hot. I'm thinking like Alexander Skarsgård. No, he actually was Alexander Skarsgård. That <laughs> He was hot um, and he did kiss me. Our prom was at, um, our after party was at the Limelight. Wow. Which was like a pretty major club at the yeah, time in New York. Yeah, huge. Um, That's so, so cool. So that was pretty cool. And then, uh, and he kissed me at the Limelight. But again, I just, I got scared. And it's so interesting because I feel like so many New York City kids that I talk to, they're always like, yeah, I snorted Coke when I was 12. I, know. <laughs> I, know. I had sex when I was nine. I mean, not nine. That's too young. You know what I'm saying? I do. I think because my parents were very freewheeling mm. and they played with drugs, not in a scary way, but in just like a bohemian way. Yeah. That like my way of rebelling or my way of having a sense of control over my own life was to be kind of straight and narrow. Yeah. And like stringent about stringent. it. Stringent. Yeah. Because I there was no there were no boundaries or disciplinary <laughs> Tools. I always find that that like people that it is you always like kind of want to counterbalance whatever it was that you feel potentially fucked you up. Yeah. I think if you smoked in the house, your kid wouldn't smoke. Hot take. <laughs> I my mom smoked out of the house and I did smoke. Interesting. Well, but I thought smoking cigarettes was I just wanted to be like cool. an adult again. Yeah. And I don't know if people thought smoking cigarettes was cool when I was in high school, but I thought it was cool. Yeah. Well, it's kind of never not cool. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Don't do drugs. No. The bloat alone. The bloat alone. Actually, do mushrooms. Yeah. That'll perhaps. make you sick, too. Yeah. <laughs> Comes out this way. Comes out this way. Like me right now. Yeah. <laughs> brain not making sense. Scrambled eggs. I once did mushrooms a lot. Too many in Joshua Tree. And um, it was like a Sunday and I was on this uh, NBC sitcom called Whitney that mm -hmm. was Whitney Cummings show. And it was uh, um, shot in front of a live audience. And I went in on Monday and I was still tripping. Like oh, it yeah. was too, and 
that environment to be in like network sitcom multicam environment still on mushrooms i like really lost my mind i thought i was never going to get back not to make this because you know this is not a, this is not a hollywood podcast okay <laughs> we're not talking about hollywood but um i one time auditioned for a multicam back when they used to audition you in person i do remember I just for a multicam and I like went into this audition and I was like so hungover. And in the scene, I remember I had to like carry a teapot. Like mm-hmm. I had to like fake carry a teapot. Mm-hmm. And I started doing it and this casting director stopped me. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. And I was like, oh my God. Cause like only one time before has that ever happened to me when I went into an, uh, whatever another audition for like a detective and every single girl there was in cop clothes and I was like am I on crazy pills it's a detective detectives don't wear fucking no, uniforms just button down anyway people what, clearly they stopped you and you got the part no they stopped me and uh and then I talked to my agent I was like why did they stop me and they were like you're they said that you're not right for uh multicams Cause like you weren't you weren't big enough you weren't mm. whatever and I was like uh huh I was like well you should tell them that when I was bending down <laughs> to pick up the fake pot I swallowed my own vomit <laughs> for them <laughs> so tell them that and now whenever I think of like multicams and people like going and you know performing in front of a live audience like that. If you wouldn't have swallowed, I think you would have gotten the part because that's big. Oh my god! I really should have. I really should have just barfed on the floor. It would have been epic. That casting director did end up giving me a job years later, though. See, damn, damn. What we do is so silly. It's so silly. <laughs> um. Okay, wait. What's my last question? Oh yes, did you have a senior superlative? And I know you didn't. I didn't. What do we think, Debbie? There's so many we can give. There's so many. Well, we could do a classic. Hmm. Most likely to find love. Aww. That's really nice. See, I was going to say most likely to be famous. Oh, well, I'll take that. Who needs love? Yeah, who needs love when you can have fame, honey? (laughs) Yeah. Or you could have, well, we can do a few. Because there's also what we had on the last episode, best eyes. Mm, which I you. think you could have gotten best thank eyes. You, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like most likely to be famous though, because like you know, you're doing sing, right. you're doing the plays. Yep. You have the adult telling you you're a star. Mm-hmm. You're doing all the right things. You're cool. You're mysterious. Mm. Anxious. Virgin. Virgin, which is the, uh, the recipe, recipe for fame. For fame. <laughs> Anxious virgin. Yeah. It, is, it kind it of is. is. Yeah. So I'm going to say most likely to be famous slash. Find love. I, I, do, I do like Tevi's find love. No one gives that. That's not a surprise to Tevi. Uh, yeah, famous and finding love. She was, you know, wanting to be closed off maybe later on. That's nice of you. That's so nice. No, you know Tevi bullies me. That. Really? Yeah, I have her on the show to bully so me. Sweet. You were nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For once in my she goddamn said, life. She, I'm also an only child. She said that we're freaks. Yeah, so you guys are. Well, we are. Yeah, you are. See? Need a lot of attention. But you know what's interesting? I only want one child. Me too. So I get concerned mm-hmm. when I talk to my onlys. I'm like, and I love you guys. You're absolute freaks, but I'm a freak too. You know what, what I mean? What do you think makes us freaks? Like what distinct qualities? You're kind of what we were talking about. Like you're like, the, you're this little shell of a person just left to internalize everything <laughs> and you are fucked up. I disagree. I would say we we're more mature. That's what I'm saying, but you right. need to de- deal with it. And then you're like, oh my God, like you're just this one person and you're like, my parents are so fucked up and I'm the only person that knows how fucked right. up they are and I need to handle it all, all on my myself. own. And I don't have another sibling to bitch about yeah. how fucked up my parents are making me fucked up. And now I'm fucked up and now I'm, you know, 57 years old and a divorcee with a kid and I'm blaming it on them and I have no one else to talk about and I'm hemorrhaging cash on <laughs> everything else. Ayahuasca didn't work. You know what I mean? And you're like, 
That's my worry. Totally. Yep. Valid. And that's me in a <laughs> nutshell, I would say. I mean, it's hard. I'm not even going near ayahuasca. It's it's tough. You have to wean off all the other stuff in order to do it. And I don't want to wean off all the other. I can't wean off Lexapro at this point. No. That's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's my real sister. You met my fake sister. Lexapro is my real uh. sister. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The only children I will say in high school always had their shit together. Yeah. You kind of have to. You do. You're running your own business. Yeah. You are the CEO of your household. That's true. Is what you are. Yeah. Like, I'm just a board member. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm not chairman. Yeah. I I have a vote, <laughs> but I'm that's it. You know, I just need to yeah. call in. Mm. You guys like really run the shit. We run the shit. Yeah. So I'm going to have an only and, that, and then I'm absolutely going to fuck it up. Have but an only, okay. but like. You'll know how to like that person can have if you raise the only in community. Well, you know, I then was they... raised. My mom's side of the family is Italian, mm. so I was raised very like you will hang out with your cousins twenty four seven. Like shipped off to my aunt's house. <laughs> like I'll do all that. Yeah, I make my sister raise my kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make your sister raise the kid. She can take it. <laughs> I'll have it and give it to her. It'll be a gift, a housewarming gift. Oh, my God. Leave it on the doorstep. Yeah, in a little basket. With a candle. I'll name it Moses. <laughs> um, Zoe, thank you so much for coming on thank my show. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. Where can all of my little listeners go? We already said, well, we're going to reiterate everything we said up top. Go watch Slip. Do yourself a favor. It's like you can binge it. It's pretty much the same. It's actually shorter than... Uh, that new Scorsese movie that's about to come out. <laughs> Literally, the whole season. The whole season. It's seven episodes. Seven half hours. Yep. Which really is three hours and 30 minutes. That's right. And the new Scorsese movie that's about to come out, 347. All right. So, and so this what one, are you and do? this one is it's sexy. It's yeah, you get fun. Tit. You're you not get getting tit, tit in Scorsese. No, tit in Scorsese. No, you get tit, you get clit. You, you don't have, really get clit, a little but you bit get of the clit. concept of You get clit. a bit of clit. <laughs> you get a tit and clit. You get pussy eating. Yes. You episode get one. lesbian sexuality. Bathroom sex. You get masturbation. Sure do. You get lovemaking. Deep lovemaking. You get best friendship. Mm -hmm. You get toxicity. Sure. Personal dialogue. Mm-hmm. And you get growth. Ultimately. Ultimately. <laughs> Thank and you, Greta. That was, a that was a beautiful description of the show. Maybe I should just become your publicist. <laughs> I would love that so much. I would be so good at being a publicist. I'd be really good at being an agent. Yeah. But ultimately, I'm going to be an amazing mom. And that's what <laughs> life is all about. <laughs> uh, I would love it if you announced me on a red carpet as like, we have Zoe Lister Jones, only child. Yeah. You know? The most iconic, famous only child. Mm. We'll, mm. we'll fact we'll check that. We'll figure we'll that out. <laughs> there have, I know there are other famous onlys, but I don't know who. Yeah, no. Let's, I think we can say me. Maybe that's my superlative. I think you are the only famous only child I know. <laughs> That's big. Huge. Actually, no. Nope. You and Caper Lant. Caper Lant. I'll take it. Good company. Good company. The company you keep. Yep. <laughs> as an only. See? That's good. Good onlys. All right. Well, go watch Slip. Go follow Zoe on social media, even though I do think we're going to be in a post social media era. I keep saying. Bring it on. We're going to be over it soon. I hope. God willing. I can't make one more front-facing comedy video that no <laughs> one watches. Okay. Um, at Zoe Lister Jones. It is. Very easy. Very easy. Literally your name. That's it. That's some dumb nickname your dead mother gave you when you were five, me. <laughs> Give me five stars on iTunes. <laughs> and, um... Come and see my hour. I'm like choking on <laughs> on my life. Come and see my hour at the Elysian Theater here in LA, the 19th and 20th of June. And if you're in New York, see my hour at Littlefield on the 27th of July. And if you're in Scotland, come see me at Fringe Festival over the entire month of August. Ooh, exciting. I want to yeah, come. Yeah, honey, I'm in my... Phoebe Waller Bridge yes, era. Bitch. <laughs> um, okay, well, until next time, stay cool, 
never change. Bye. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>